In this video, we're going to be looking at order payments, introduced in version 490. We recommend that everyone using Brightpile back office sales, purchases and accounting understand these changes, as it could have an impact on what you're doing today. There are some new settings, some new reports, some new workflows, and also some workflows you won't be able to use anymore. In this video, you will learn how orders and payments have worked in Brightpile up until 490, how orders and payments will work in version 490 onwards, what benefits these changes bring, what you will see in Brightpearl and how to process payments, which workflows will need to be changed, how we will be upgrading your account and data to version 490, what you'll need to do before the upgrade to 490, what you'll need to do after the upgrade to 490, and what changes you'll need to make to your apps before version 491. In Brightpearl today, when allocating a payment to an order, you select a bank account nominal code. This indicates where the money should be posted in accounting. When the payment is submitted, the entry is passed directly through to accounting and creates an accounting journal. This diagram gives an example of a sales order. When a payment is allocated against the sales order, it creates a sales receipt type journal. It's the existence of this journal which marks the order as paid. They have a direct link, so changing or cancelling that journal will directly affect the paid amount and the page status of the order. So currently orders are linked directly to accounting. Let's see how that will change in 490. We're introducing the concept of order payments. So when a payment is allocated against an order, it is not passed directly to accounting. An order payment is created. On a sale, we call this a customer payment. For a purchase, it is called a supplier payment. The existence of the order payment is what marks the order as paid, and by how much. The stage after creating the order payment is looking at whether any accounting is to be created. This will depend on the type of payment. We'll look more at payment types later, but in short, an auth-only payment wouldn't yet need any accounting, but a captured payment would. So why is this changing and what does it mean? Let's consider a sales order. When the order is created, it's added into the orders module. There are three actions which automatically create accounting, fulfill and ship. This will create a goods out note. The goods out note gets marked as shipped and this is what updates the order ship status. It also passes the details across to accounting so the cost of sales accounting journal can be created. This currently uses the JJ type journal but in 490 we're introducing new journal types so you'll start to see the GO type used here. You can read more about journal types in our release notes. Invoicing the sale creates a PDF invoice document, stamps the invoice reference onto the order and updates the order status to invoiced. It then passes the details across to accounting to create the SI journal. In both of these cases, if the accounting journals are edited or cancelled, it will have no effect on the order status or the details reported in the orders module. The data flows to accounting, but any changes won't flow back. If we look at how payments are currently handled, we see that the details pass straight through to accounting. The order relies entirely on the existence of the journal to know whether it is paid and by how much, and it does this by matching the order reference on the journal. This means if the order reference is changed or removed, or if the journal is cancelled, the link is lost, and the order paid status and amount will change. This means that any activities in accounting are directly affecting the orders. In 490, with the introduction of order payments, we see a more consistent approach for handling payments. When a payment is allocated against an order, an order payment is created. This is what marks the order as paid and by how much, and then we pass it through to accounting. There is no direct link between the journal in accounting and the order. And this means, like invoices and like inventory journals, any amendments made in accounting will only be reported in accounting. This means that the orders module can now stand alone. If you're not already using Brightpile Accounting, we can now easily activate it, reset any data that's already been recorded, and perform a clean migration of your data from your old accounting system. So in 490, the order is marked as paid by the existence of an order payment. We call that a customer payment for sales, or a supplier payment for purchases. The accounting is still automatically created, but only if it's relevant. Not every order payment requires accounting, as we'll see a little later. And most importantly, the changes made directly to accounting journals will not affect the order paid amount and status. So what benefits will you see in Brightpearl? 
First of all, as we'll see in a moment, you'll get to work with payment methods instead of bank accounts. Using payment methods, you can ensure the correct bank account is automatically used for your accounting. You'll now see the payment method is recorded for every payment taken against orders. You'll be able to manage auto-only payments in Brightpell as well as your captured payments. You'll see more informative payment statuses for managing your orders. There are new order payment reports providing full tracking and management of your order payments. And if you aren't already, you can start using Brightpell accounting with a fresh data reset and accounts migration without affecting your order history. So let's see what it looks like in Brightpell 490. When allocating a payment against an order, we no longer see the connections to accounting. Instead of selecting a bank account nominal code, you will choose a payment method. Payment methods are added in the settings area, which we'll have a look at in a moment. And if your payment method is connected to a payment gateway, you will be provided with the payment processing window. Otherwise, you'll see the manual payment allocation window. You'll notice this has been changed a little to provide a summary of the details from the order and the option to enter the payment or a reversal. When the payment is submitted, as always, the order is marked as paid and the order payment status is updated to paid in full or paid in part as necessary. You'll see the new order payment created and displayed on the order payment report. There's one for supplier payments for your purchases and one for your customer payments for sales. These reports provide the detail and audit trail of all payments taken against your orders, but it won't necessarily be what's recorded in accounting. Each payment has a payment type and this indicates the direction the money is moving. And it also indicates whether accounting should be created. Now that orders are not reliant on the accounting existing to be marked as paid, we've been able to introduce more types of payment, such as auth only. These are the different payment types Brightpell supports. A receipt indicates money coming in, either from a customer for a sale or a refund from a supplier on a purchase credit. A payment is money going out, either a refund to a customer on a sales credit or a payment to a supplier on a purchase. Both these types indicate the movement of money straight away and will create accounting. The auth type payment indicates the payment has been authorised but not yet captured. This will likely happen later on when the items have been marked as shipped. Only once the funds have been captured will you want the accounting to be created. And finally, if an auth payment is not to be captured, it can be voided. In 490, there will be no changes to how channel payments are handled. Brightpell currently only downloads payments on capture, and that will continue to be the case for the time being. We are looking to update our channels to use these new payment types in the future. However, they are ready to use right away if you wish to update your own private apps. So now that we have new payment types, we've also introduced new order payment statuses to allow you to better manage your orders and shipments. In addition to the existing paid, part paid and not paid statuses, we now have not applicable, where the order total is zero and therefore no payment is required. And we have the authorised status. This indicates that an auth only payment has been taken against the order and will allow you to see that the items can be shipped. We've introduced a number of new terms so far, so let's recap. We, so we have orders and credits across sales and purchases. These each have an order payment status to tell us whether it's paid, part paid, not paid, authorised or no payment is applicable. When a payment is allocated against the order or credit, an order payment is created. This will be a customer payment for a sale, but a supplier payment for a purchase. Altogether, we call them order payments. An order payment records the payment method used, the amount paid and the payment type, so whether it was a receipt, a payment or auth only. It's the payment type which controls whether any accounting is created. Accounting will be created for receipt, payment or capture, but not the auth or the void. When the accounting journal is created, it's using the bank account from the payment method. So let's learn more about these payment methods. So processing order payments relies on having payment methods set up. Payment methods are added at settings, company, payment methods. We're going to learn a bit about setting them up, but you won't need to worry about doing this as the upgrade to 490 will include the creation of your payment methods, one per bank account. You will see they're added with the same name as your bank account, since this is what you're used to seeing. And if you're already using SagePay, Authorize.net or PayPal, you'll see additional payment methods are added for each of those. You may also want to add new payment methods in the future. Each method has a name, 
and that's what you'll see on the order when you're allocating the payment. They also have a code. This is used for matching to channels and via the API, which is why it can't be edited, as it will prevent payment downloads from working correctly. We'll talk more about that later. Each method can be assigned a bank account. This is not required, but it is essential if you're using Brightpile Accounting. Without being set, no payment journals will be created in accounting, as it won't know which bank account to use when you're processing order payments. You can also see here that I can set a bank account for each currency. This will only become useful when multi-currency is released, at which point you'll be able to create foreign currency bank accounts and process foreign currency payments. So for now, you only need your base currency bank set. You might choose to rename your payment method to something more friendly. As I said earlier, you will automatically have a payment method added in 490 for Authorize.net, SagePay and PayPal if you're already using those apps. They will be automatically linked to the payment gateway. So you'll see one payment method for the bank and one payment method for SagePay or Authorize.net, which may result in a duplicate payment method for you. Here I have the bank account which I use for SagePay as a payment method, and I also have a payment method created from the SagePay gateway, and they'll both show up in my orders. But in my case, this bank account is purely used for SagePay, and I never need to use it for manually entering payments. So I don't need both. So I'm going to deactivate this one and leave only the payment gateway as an option. It's up to you whether you do the same. This is the same for authorize.net. We'll create a payment method for the bank account and we'll create a payment method from the payment gateway app. You might not need both, in which case one of them can be deactivated. With PayPal, we will also create a payment method for the bank account and one for the PayPal app, which is linked to the PayPal app. If your PayPal bank account is set on your sales channels, such as eBay, Shopify, Magento, BigCommerce, EK and PowerShop, the payment method with the bank account code will be used. If you're using the PayPal app features, such as taking payments via the web portal, creating accounting from the PayPal log, or manually linking a PayPal transaction to an order, the payment method with the code PayPal will be used. If you're using PayPal in both ways, the sales channels and the app features, you will need to make sure you keep both active for the time being. We will soon be updating channel settings so that you'll be able to choose a payment method instead of a bank account, at which point you can switch everything over to a single PayPal payment method. If you're unsure of whether you need both right now, leave them both active or contact our support team for advice. It's important to understand the changes introduced by order payments as it will affect some workflows. Any workflow related to amending payments will now need to be done by the order. For example, moving a payment from one order to another where it was perhaps allocated to the wrong order in the first place. Previously, this could be done by editing the order reference on the journal. In 490, the order reference can't be edited on the journal. This field has been locked, since doing so would only update accounting and would not update the order, which could result in your modules becoming out of sync. If a payment has been allocated to the incorrect order, you will now need to cancel the payment and re-enter it against the correct order. Cancelling a payment can easily be done from the payments report. Not only will this update the order, but it will also update accounting. Remember, order data flows into accounting, but corrections made in accounting journals will not go back and update orders. Changing the paid amount against an order could also previously been done by editing the amounts directly within the journal. In 490, to keep orders and accounting in sync, you must process corrections via the order. In this scenario, you can either cancel and re-enter the payment, or you can enter the difference as a payment or a reverse payment. Remember, changes made directly in accounting journals won't update the order. It's always been this way for invoices and inventory journals. Now we must remember that it's the same for payments. The golden rule for keeping your modules in sync is that if you wish to update anything relating to an order, to always do it from the order and never via the accounting journal. I mentioned earlier that the accounting won't necessarily show the same payment information as in the orders payments report, and how this is because auth-only order payments won't create accounting. So although your order payment report says there was a payment and your order says it's paid, there's no journal. The orders payment report also only shows payments relating to orders so won't include payments which have been entered without an order, such as payments and refunds for quick invoices or credits, and payments against supplier bills and credits. 
These processes do not affect the orders module and only create accounting. Also, on account payments entered directly against customers and suppliers. Whilst these are still on account, they are purely financial and the accounting is recorded. But only once allocated to an order will an order payment exist on the order payments report. Depending on your role and the task in hand, you'll be interested in knowing the status of your orders or your accounting. Your bank reconciliation is done of your accounting, but shipping of your orders is done based off the order payment status, including those auth-only transactions. If you want to see which order payments have been created in accounting, you will notice the journal ID is linked on the payments report. So these are all reasons why your order payment report in the orders module is not going to map precisely what's in accounting. This is purely a timing issue. Order payments has the most up-to-date, relevant information for processing your orders. Your accounting only needs to know about those payments when they need to be recognised financially. Each area has its own specific purpose and is updated when it needs to be. To ensure you're ready to go with no delays when your account is upgraded to 490, we'll be doing two things. We'll be creating your payment methods and we'll be creating order payments for all of your historical payment journals. Payment methods will be automatically created for every bank account. If the bank account is inactive, then the payment method will also be inactive. If you have SagePay, Authorize.net or PayPal set up, there will be additional payment methods for each of those apps. We'll also be populating your order payment reports for all your historical payments. They will be linked directly to the existing journals. And since payment methods didn't exist when the payments were processed, they will all be set to other. In 490, we've introduced order payments in a way which ensures all existing functionality continues to work as previously. So no matter how a payment is created, you'll still see your orders updated and the accounting created. On your sales channel settings, you will still see bank accounts as selected. We will be changing this to payment methods, but in 490, any payments created from a channel will use the payment method with the same code as the bank account. Here we can see eBay uses bank account 1240. When a payment downloads, the payment method will be this one with the same code. If you're using the API to send payments, perhaps you have a private app, this will also continue to work in 490. You will see the accounting is created and that Brightpearl will recognise that an order payment is also required. However, we will be deprecating this method of sending payments into Brightpearl via the accounting module. All apps will need to begin using the order payment post instead of the sales receipt or purchase payment post. We advise you to start updating your apps as soon as 490 is released and recommend that it's complete in time for the next release of 491. These changes will be required if you wish to adopt full multi-currency in Brightpearl. We will also be deprecating these existing API messages, so it's important that the updates are made, but rest assured they do not need to be done in time for 490 and we will notify you of the exact dates the messages will be deprecated. So finally, what you need to do to be ready for 490. For the upgrade, ensure that everyone understands the changes coming with order payments. After the upgrade, check through your payment methods, rename them if you wish, and remove any duplicates for SagePay or Authorize.net if you wish. Begin to use the new workflows for managing amendments to payments, so remembering to cancel and re-enter a payment rather than editing the journal, and begin updating your apps to use the new order payments post. You can learn more about these changes required for your apps on our website.